Hi everyone, welcome to Rutgers Physical Therapy Program. My name is Dr. Karen Hewn. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there today with you, but um, I am sort of the technology person here, I guess you could say. Um, my research interests include clinical reasoning and the use of educational technology. So um, we do use a fair amount of technology here in the program, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So hopefully um, this recording plays well and works well. Um, First, I want to tell you a little bit about our philosophy about technology in the program. We believe technology should not be used to replace your hands-on or your face time with faculty. We use it to enhance your education. So our goal is to um, get the mouse out of the way. Is to use it to um, again to enhance your education, to afford you additional opportunities to practice, or to expose you to things that we can't expose you to in the classroom. So. Um, You'll see that you're in our, our probably most technologically advanced lab, the Ross lab, and hopefully this video is playing on the three screens in the room. We have the ability to record in this room, so we can record uh, VHS, DVD, audio, um, and as you see, because the, it projects on all three screens, when we're doing a demonstration in a hands-on lab course, you don't have to huddle around the table where we're demonstrating. We can direct the cameras mm -hmm. at the demonstration and then and you can see it projected from wherever you are in the room and you can see it from you know multiple angles. We have three cameras in the ceiling so we can take multiple angles of what we're demonstrating so you can see um, a nice view from wherever you're sitting in the room of the demonstrations. And again, we can record those for you to look at them at a later time. If you look up, you'll see that there are pull down plugs uh, on top of you. So most of the students now are using iPads or laptops or um, you know, bringing those to class and taking digital notes um, so you can plug in and charge uh, because you're here for long days, you need to recharge your devices sometimes. So uh, that's doable in here as well. Other ways that we use technology in the program, several of the faculty will record lectures ahead of time. So we'll record either a podcast, which is just the audio, or a vodcast, which will have video and audio and ask that you listen to those lectures before you come into class. That allows the instructor then to spend all of your class time one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on in a cl more clinical situations so that you have actual practice experience and you're not sitting there in class listening to lectures. This has become quite popular with the students because most of, most of you will end up, when you, if you're commuting, carpooling with you know, a few of your classmates together, and a lot of people are listening to the lectures in the car on the way in, into class or on the way home from class. And I've had several comments that people have gone back and listened to things that they thought they understood but later learned they didn't or didn't stink at the first time they even listened to it. So they're listening to them multiple times. Um, I had one student who used to listen to them while she was vacuuming. She was married. She had kids. She was busy. She would listen to the, the lectures while she was vacuuming and cleaning her house or making dinner. So it, it does afford you some flexibility um, for using your time well, I suppose. Another way, um, program that we use in here... Um, is a virtual patient program. We have two virtual patient programs that we use. One is designed at um, helping you improve your clinical reasoning skills, which is how a therapist decides what to do with a patient. You do an evaluation, you get all this information, you have to decide what of it is relevant and, and how are you going to treat this patient. And that is what we call clinical reasoning, that whole thought process. So I'm going to pull up the program now. Hopefully I'm going to disappear and pull up this program, Virtual Physical Therapy Clinician. It was created here. It's one of my projects. Um, it is for sale, and there are about 18 physical therapy schools using it now. Um, but it's ours, so we know it best. So what you do is you log in. You get a patient, and you log in. You each have your individual login passwords. And you can then go in and actually evaluate a patient. So this is just like you would get on a prescription. You would get this is what you get from a doctor, you know, this guy's 50 years old, he's complaining of shoulder pain. And that's all you're going to get. So um, then you can go in and you can do an interview with him. So you see here there are questions. I can click on a question, click ask, and the answer appears right down here. So what are your goals for therapy? I ask that question. He wants to be able to do normal routine, got pain, including sailing and tennis. So in this way, you can go through and do a complete history on this patient. And we also know that um, expert clinicians, immediately after talking to patients, already have an idea of what they think the problem is. So the program is going to try to get you to think like them, like an expert therapist already. So it's going to ask you, what do you think the problem is? You don't have to be correct here. We just want to know your thought process. 
And then it gives you access to another whole series of, of questions so I can ask his um, what medications he's taking, what his family medical history is. So I can ask a ton of, of history questions. There are over 500 history questions in the database in the program that you can use. And then you can actually examine the patient. So if I click on this symbol means strength, I click on his shoulder, I'll get the strength of the right shoulder for this patient. Okay, so I can examine just about everything in here, walking, sitting, rolling, strength, sensation, range of motion, everything. Um, I also have the ability to upload audio, video, and images, image files, so I can upload a video of a patient walking, and you would have to an analyze that person's ability to walk. We can upload um, CAT scans, x-rays, EMG strips, uh, anything we can put in audio tapes so when you put the stethoscope on the patient's chest you will hear his breath sounds. Um, and this program is tracking everything that you do throughout the program. So it's, it's recording every click that you make. So when we as the instructor then go back and look at how you did in the case, we see exactly how you did. We actually can see your thought process because the program requires you to link certain things together. It makes your thought process very visible to us. And then we can give you individualized feedback on how your thought process is going. We can see where you're very strong or where, you know, an area that you might need to work on. The individual feedback is very nice when the class gets to be 60 of you and, you know, we're giving feedback to the class and you're like, oh, I don't think I did that. But here we can actually show you and tell you individually what you did well and what, what you know, you might need to work on. So this program is going to let you evaluate the patient, diagnose them, come up with a prognosis, and actually design a treatment plan as well. And we can then, you know, see how you did on all that. And we discuss these cases. Um, this program allows us to give you a lot of practice with this, which we know you need. There's one case in here in the spring semester of your first year where you'll do 12 of these cases in a single course. Um, and that is not possible for us to do in a regular class setting. So you'll hear um, a lecture on the pathology of stroke, and you'll go home and you'll do a virtual case on a patient post-stroke. So the feedback we've gotten from the students is they really like the tie there that it makes them understand what of the lecture and how you know how to apply it clinically, how to use it in a clinical situation. So this is one program we use. The other program, which is really brand new, is our virtual hospital room. So here I am, my avatar in here. Um, this is a virtual world, so it too is web-based, so is the other program, they're, they're web-based. So you can log in from anywhere. And you can see we have patient rooms set up in here. And all of these features are interactive. I can click on the menu and read the patient's menu. I can ask the patient to sit up. I can ask for his blood pressure. Let me get back out here. I can click on here and get his blood pressure. So BP is 170 over 80 on the right. And then question you, is it okay for you to continue? Is this a safe blood pressure? You know, tell me yes, you're right, so it will allow you to go on. So all of these features are interactive in here. On this screen, I can upload any kind of document, PDF, Word documents, uh, PowerPoint, uh, video clips, again. So um, again, this is another place that you can go in and practice working on patient cases. There's a lot of neat features in here that are helpful to help you learn. If you look over here, oops, oops stuck on the bed. So right here you see we already have some films brought up in here. So we could have you sitting here on these stools and we could be talking to you about what you see on these films and you know what do you think is going on here. So we can actually have a lecture sort of scenario in here as well. It could be related to the case that you're going to go see you know, in one of these virtual rooms. Through here we have a conference room. So in here, um, you know, this is where you would host team meetings. So our first project is going to be um, there's a big push now for interdisciplinary healthcare, the, you know, the team approach of disciplines working together rather than everybody working alone. So we're going to do a project in here with uh, dietetic students, physical therapy students, respiratory students, and physician assistant students. You're all going to come in here, sit around this conference table, and on this screen over here, we'll have a patient chart up there. And you'll all get to review and read the patient chart. And then you're going to come up with a team approach of how you're going to evaluate and treat this patient. And you'll go back to the hospital room in there and you'll actually talk to that patient and do your evaluations on that patient. 
So you communicate through here. You can either do it through text, but what we'll use primarily is, you know, you'll wear a headset just like you would in playing a video game or more listening to your music. And um, you can talk to each other. You can talk to your fellow students and you'll be able to talk to the faculty. This, if you notice, this is actually a silent room. This is a room where the faculty can be standing over here and watching you back in that first hospital room I showed you talk and interact with that patient. A lot of students are uncomfortable with faculty members standing on top of them. It makes them nervous and they don't perform as well. This way we're not on top of you. We are farther away. We're not standing in the room with you. It makes patient students a little more comfortable. But we can still watch you. So if I zoom in on bed two, it takes me as a faculty member. And you'd be standing around that bed um, and I could hear you and I could talk to you and you could talk to me if I allowed it. Um, so if you're about to do something terribly harmful to the patient, I could step in and say, you know, maybe you should check this first or um, that is not the correct thing to do or whatever. We can take notes over here. You look over here, these boards with the red lines are whiteboards. So again, we can upload anything we want to here. We want to put another x-ray or CT image, image, an EMG strip, a PowerPoint for you to learn about, you know, diagnosis. It can all be done in here. Um, one of the big problems with interprofessional education is, is um, we're not all on the same campus. You know, the, the PA students are not on this campus with us, and you all have very busy class schedules, so getting you together to work um, together in a team approach is very difficult. So um, this way you don't have to come to campus. You, know, you could be sitting at home in your pajamas with a beer or a glass of wine for all we care. We won't even know. Um, and you can, you know, still do this interdisciplinary work. And as you see, we have four um, patient rooms set up in here, and, and this is all expandable. We can we can add to this as we want. So we're very excited about this. We have a lot of things um, that we think we're going to be able to do in here. Uh, one of the things I run across as students is, is parents and people ask you, you know, is my son or daughter going to walk? And that's not easy to do with a parent, and now you can practice it in here. Um, these patients in the beds will actually be played by actors. We'll have an actor sitting at home with his headset online in here with you. And when you ask him a question, he'll be answering it. He'll have scripts from us, and they'll be answering a question. So it'll be quite, um, we're hoping it'll be quite realistic. So it's another really fun um, opportunity that we have if you use technology. The last one, and, and it won't play in the video because it's, it's too large for a program, is we have a game slash simulation where we give you a patient case, a chart, and you have to go into that patient's home and evaluate the home for accessibility. So one of the cases is someone who is now paralyzed uh, they're from the waist down, and they're going to be coming home in a wheelchair. So you have to um, evaluate that home and suggest modifications to the home so that this person can come home. So if there are stairs to enter the home, you have to have a ramp built. If the stove controls are on the back and someone in a wheelchair can't reach them, you have to make a change there. So that is a really fun game, too. It, too, is web-based. Um, so you'll be doing it off campus on your own as well. There are four levels to that case that are progressively more difficult, and you have to succeed um, at one level before you can move to the next. It's also a tutorial because we teach you how to do a home assessment as part of the program. So the first part of it is a tutorial that teaches you what things you should look for in a home, and then you actually go in and, and you do it on four different levels of home. So um, that too will be tested uh, this spring. So both of these, all of these programs will be ready when you come into the program. So I hope that gives you a little overview of how we use technology in the program. Again, I want to stress that that we do not use it to replace your hands-on time. If anything, we use it to get you more hands-on time. The faculty is committed to that and using technology, not just because it's cool, which it is, but um, to actually do something to enhance your education. So uh, Dr. Van Wierden can answer any questions you have, and I hope to see you in the program.